So you're taking these notes because you're new to this class, and because of that, there's going to be details in here that are going to tell you how to take my notes, and really what the purpose of them is. So first off, mid-center, bold, underlined, is going to be the header. And this is in red. 99% of the time when I write in red, I'm going to discourage that you even bother writing it down. This is just the let's talk it through type stuff. In parentheses here it says page 6, and so this is where the notes begin. This is the start of the notes. And here's the thing. If you were in history class, you might be reading from a book and you'd be taking notes um, where you would actually be recording information about some sort of figure like Abe Lincoln or whatever. But in this case, these notes are all about the fact that you're going to be going in and like filling in different stuff in all these areas. I'm saying that and pointing that out because, for me, your notes are not in like a spiral notebook. That is where most of your practice and everything will go. So these are notes, and the way you should recognize them is that they come from me, and they look like different sections, and you got to fill in. It's where you're learning the material. That's what notes are. So let's go ahead and get started. Often at the beginning of notes, I'll mention something where it's like a quick review of concepts. Now, there's really no excuse to uh, tell me that this video goes too quickly or anything because you have this pause button somewhere on the page, and you can always revisit or slow me down. One thing that is not okay is speeding me up, even if this feels comfortable. There's a reason behind a lot of what I do, and I want you to stick it out. So in this quick review of concepts, there's many different ways that we can represent multiplication. So the EX with the colon after it stands for examples. And some of those examples are going to come right now. In pre-algebra, you would have known that if you saw something like x, y, that you would be multiplying the variable x times y. So that, that means if x were 2 and y were 3, it would really be an expression that would be equal to 2 times 3, or 6. Now, we didn't have to say x times y with a symbol, but we could. And the reason we didn't have to is that whenever we see a letter next to a number, the variables being back-to-back -back like that imply multiplication. So that, let me point something out. The 2, 3 example I gave you, when I'd write it next, I would have to show the time symbol. Because if I didn't, it would just be the number 23. And if x were 2 and y was 3, it is not the same as 23. It would have to be 2 times 3. And I like that word implied. Now notice the red part you would not have to write down. The blue part you would. Now something that is implied is suggested, but not explicitly or told you straight out. You know, it's got to be suggested. Often, we might have x and then y in parentheses. But those parentheses only house the variable y, and they really don't have much meaning. You could also have y times an x in parentheses, or in parentheses I could have an x followed by another y in parentheses. And all of these suggest the exact same thing. So here I do want you to write this down. I want you to write down all imply multiplication. So if you have a difficult time with writing or you're not as quick of a writer as I am, pause the video and get caught up. If you have spelling difficulties, maybe you pull out a spell check or something, but um, a lot of these words, like if I were to use the word expression, it's right here, so try to seek it out. Under the algebraic expression column that's kind of loosely fitting here, let's write what an expression might look like. 3 times x plus 4. So I would have 3 times a variable. So let's see if we can write an arrow to the x and write the words a variable. Now if something varies day to day, like somebody's behavior, it changes. So hidden in the word variable is the word vary, v-a-r-y. And if something varies, it means it changes day to day. So if x was 3 in this problem, it might be 4 in the next. And the 3x plus 4 whole deal that has this variable in it, this would be called an expression. And not just any expression, because it has variables in it, we would call it an algebraic expression. Another thing that they expect that we're comfortable with by this point in math are exponents. And I will write 
what an exponent looks like. So I'm going to have a base of a, so like some number, raised to the power n is what an exponent would look like. So I'm going to draw an arrow to n, and I'm going to put exp. Now, I don't think I'm going to get confused. The word exponent is right here, but exp is also the start of expression. So when I say that you can and can't cut corners in class, you're going to want to make sure when is appropriate and when not so much. The entire thing is called the power. So I'd say a to the power of n. And then I would label the letter a as the base. Now notice that, you know, as I'm making this lowercase a, I kind of dramatically made it bigger so that the n and the exponent come out nicely. So all of this is just your basic stuff. In my notes, you'll see mid-centered stuff. Um, so this is right algebraic expression. So this is going to be like the problem type. It's a heading of sorts, but it's not underlined like my notes up top. And I'm jumping back just to show that this is underlined while this is not. So that's the type of problem. And again, it's in red, so you don't have to write this. And then here we're going to have the instructions. And these instructions say, write an algebraic expression for each verbal expression. So what they're saying is that for each verbal expression, and verbal means words, now here's the deal. If this is a future quiz or test, I can read this to you if you have an IEP, because that is an accommodation where I can read things aloud to you. What I cannot do is tell you what it's meaning for you to do. So that's on your own. So I'll read it aloud. So when you look at these, you don't want to just bypass the directions too quickly. You want to make sure you actually understand what they mean. So if you don't know that the word verbal means words, then even though this is in red, you should write it um, to help you get that extra practice with it. So we're going to take a verbal expression. So for each expression, we're told to write an algebraic expression. And the algebraic expression we're just talking about right here. Eight more than a number. We've got two choices. I know that more than, uh, if I want something to grow, I guess I need to add on to it. We definitely have to do a plus. Now, if I had eight more than, even though you see this eight first, and then you hear the word a number, which I'm just going to use the variable x, even though you hear that eight first, if I wanted to get more than what I had before, I had to have something to start with. So even though the number verbally comes next, if I wanted something to grow by 8, technically I'm adding on to it. Now if you're doing problems through a website, they're probably not going to catch you on that because yes, you can add in any order, but with subtraction it becomes a problem. So make sure that you think about these deeply and try to be as uh, verbally accurate and numerically accurate as possible. Now going from this problem example to this one, quite a bit more challenging. So this next one says, 7 less than the product of 4 and a number. Now if you were the product of something, it means you resulted from something. And so when I read this, I see the word product, but I think of this as 4 and a number. These are together. So if I had the product of 4 and a number, so I look in my notes and maybe it tells me that's multiplication. Um, so maybe I choose the variable y this time. I'd have to do 4 y, because that's 4 times y. That's my multiplication. Now the only way I'm going to get less than something is by taking away from it. So I'm going to do 4y minus 7. Now these are pretty short problems. There's probably really no need to box them on these. It's not like it's after six steps we have something showing up. But I do want to talk about this a little bit more. And I want to talk about this because you might be getting already a little bit frustrated and having a difficult time with the word here. That's totally normal. Um, it's almost unfortunate that the beginning section of this chapter is variables and expressions where they're making us translate things into words. Um, it's a good way to start because they're establishing the language of this chapter and they're setting you up with kind of the tools you need, but it's also a difficult thing to do. But don't let it beat, you, beat yourself up. Just kind of keep on working and they'll get easier over time. 
Um, but one of my strategies that I always like to use, I try to do this with real numbers. So if I was told you find 7 less than 8, well, the only way you're going to do 7 less than 8, maybe you're like, well, I know what that is. 7 less than 8 is 1. So the only way I would get that is by doing 8 minus 7. So maybe by using real concrete numbers, I'm helping myself to um, use that as like a bridge. B-R-I-D-G-E, so there's my really shoddy bridge. Going from the concrete, meaning I can wrap my brain around and actually physically touch these numbers if I wanted, towards the abstract representation of the math, where you're dealing with letters as numbers and all of that. This third example is quite a bit more challenging, but if you want to give yourself a pause and see if you can try to go through this and make this an on your own, on your own, or an OYO problem, be my guest, because I'll start talking about it now. So the product of, if I want to have the product, it has to be two different things that I'm taking the product of. So the product of 7 and the sum of a number and 8, the sum of 8 and a number. Okay, so the product is two things. So on the left, I know I'm going to do 7 times something. So it says the sum of 8 and a number. Now whenever you have problems like those four common words, sum for addition, difference for subtraction, product for multiplication, quotient for division, those are all just straight up left to right. So the sum of 8 and a number. So here's 8 plus x. But here's the issue. I need to do the product of the 7 and the sum of that. And what I have written is only doing 7 times 8. And then after it would do 7 times 8, then I would eventually add on this x. So if I want to prevent that from um, being inaccurate, by putting parentheses around 8 and x, I really am actually getting the sum of those two numbers, and then multiplying it by 7. So this is what I have represented right here. This is the sum of 8 and x multiplied by 7. So that's what it should look like. And in fact, you know what, on that one I'm not going to box it, because once you got the parentheses there, it looks kind of sloppy. Like I said, multi-step problems, a little bit of difficulty. Stick through them. We'll see how they go. We'll stop this video because uh, we're getting past the language part and moving on to a different type of problem. So this will make up the second video.